The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the ancient craft of bee hunting. And by bee hunting, I mean searching for a wild colony of honeybees. Now this is a practice that has been done in North America for hundreds of years. Um, and historically it was done to get honey. Um, and it, therefore it generally involved being uh, killing a colony of bees because the bee hunter would find the, the colony of bees, usually in a hollow tree, then they would have to cut down the tree, split open the tree to expose the nest and so they could collect the honeycombs. Now, that's how it used to be done, but that's not what we're doing these days. This day, now we're doing it just as, a, uh, as an outdoor recreational activity. Now, let me explain at this point the steps of bee hunting. There, there, I guess there's four or five basic steps. The first step is you go to flowers like this and you capture a bunch of bees and you do it in this little device called a bee box. It's a homemade device um, which enables you to efficiently get the interest of the bees, capture the interest of the bees on your little food source, your very special rich food source. The way you, the structure of a bee box is that it's a two-chambered device. It's got a front chamber accessed through that front door and I'll show you how that, why that's important. Then there's a divider in the middle, and then the rear chamber um, doesn't have an opening because the back, it lets in light through the glass. And the way this, the way this is going to work <clears throat> is that we're going to go up to a flower that has a bee on it, close the box around the bee, and then lure her to the rear chamber. One, two, three, four, five. So step one is you, you get a bunch of bees caught in your bee box and then you introduce them to a rich bait or food source, which is, I'll explain in a bit, is a comb filled with sugar water. Once you've got the bees baited to your food, they will be locked in and they will make trip after trip after trip to that, between their going home to their nest with a load of your sugar syrup back to the comb and so forth. Once you've got the, that established, then you can see the, what the bee's beeline is to their home. And by beeline, I mean the direct route home, which is the route that the bees take for, set for themselves. Once you can see the beeline, then you know the direction. And then what, you'll do, what we'll do next is we'll label some of the bees using little paint sets um, for individual identification. And the reason we do that is we want to get the round trip times of these bees. How much time it takes from when a bee leaves the comb, goes home, and comes back. And the reason we want to get that information is that will give us a good indication of the distance to the home. And if it's only a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, then that's really good. That means the site, the bee tree, might be within sight. If it's up to five or six minutes, it's probably about a half a mile away. If it's 10 minutes or so, it, it's a full mile away. So hopefully today we'll find something where the bees aren't going, needing 10 minutes to go home and come back. <laughs> once you've done that, once you've now at that point, you've got the uh, direction and a sense of the distance. You then move your, um, your equipment, your little feeding station in the direction of the home. And step by step, you work your way closer to the bees' home. And then finally you go into search mode where you do a tree by tree search and then you find the bees. And those combs are the receptacles for the sugar syrup. Here's my little jar of sugar syrup. This is getting this sugar syrup right is actually fairly important, but the recipe is very simple. I make I make it up with three quarters of a cup of, of cane sugar, granular sugar, and then I add enough boiling water to make one cup total volume and so it doesn't take a cup of water it's enough hot water to make up one cup of, of the syrup and the reason that's important is you want it you want it to be very concentrated syrupy but not so thick that it takes the bees forever to drink it up and I find that that recipe three quarters of a cup of sugar and enough water to make one cup of, of syrup is works really well so you need a, a jar of syrup and I use these canning jars, or some people call them jam jars, because they have a nice seal so your syrup doesn't leak out and get everything s sticky. 
So you've got your jar of syrup. You also need a little medicine dropper because you're going to use that to drop sugar syrup down in the cells of the comb. You can't just pour it, it just, the syrup doesn't go in the cells very well. It just pours off the side. Medicine dropper, easily found, is, makes that job simple. You don't really need this, but it's useful. I use a, a jar lid with a screen that goes over this. And we're going to put our, we're actually going to put our little baits on top of this. And the, what this is for is it's, it enables me to put a drop of anise extract, scent, underneath the comb. And so the comb will be um, marked by scent very, very strongly. And that's going to be important as, so the bees can find our little feeding station here. We will need some paint pens to label bees. I mentioned earlier we're going to be labeling bees for individual identification. You might wonder, well, how do you paint a bee? Well, you'll see, but it involves, and basically it involves putting a dot of paint on the bees, between the bee's wings, on her thorax, or on the end of her abdomen, um, or both. And um, by having different colors, you can make different color combinations, and you can, we're going to label about 10 bees for individual recognition. And again, the reason we need that, we want that, is that we want to be able to time individuals. We want to be able to recognize individuals so we can see how long bees take to go home and then come back. Again, that will be our, that'll give us an estimate of the distance to their home. You can use these paint pens. Oh, I should explain that with these paint pens, you really want to get the ones that are water-based paint pens. There are some paint pens that are uh, petroleum material based like xylene and they stink and the bees don't like those so they stink for, for bee hunting. Something else that we'll need and I brought here is a compass. And why do you want to have a compass? Because when you note the direction the bees are flying off to determine their bee line home it's actually useful to to take measurements of that because at some point, once you've got that sense of the bee line, you're going to start moving down the bee line. This helps you move precisely down the bee line. A very important item for the bee hunter, for the modern up-to-date bee hunter, is the folding lawn chair. <laughs> makes, makes it all much more pleasurable. Okay, we've got our comb loaded. I'm going to put it in the front chamber of the box. Close that up, and now the bees are in the rear chamber, so I'm going to let, I want them to find the comb, so I'm going to raise this divider and I'll prop it up so that they can come forward and discover the comb. And I'm going to facilitate their discovery by putting my opaque cloth over the box to darken the interior of the box so that there's no little places where the light is is streaming into the box. That would attract the bees as they're trying to get out and I want them to walk all around so they're um, likely to find the comb easily. So we'll leave them, we'll leave that shut for five minutes. With the box covered for five minutes, we're now going to let the bees out. I'll do this very gently. I don't want to spook the bees. And I'm not going to pull the comb out. I'm just going to leave everything in place. I'm just going to let them fly. And if they have discovered the food and are interested, they will do exactly what we're seeing here. They come out, they turn around, and they rock back and forth. They're memorizing what this place looks like because they want to be able to come back here. And I'm happy to see that all of the bees did that. Time is 1.33. released five bees, and when they do come back, I want, to, I want them to land on this comb in a place where I can put, put the paint marks on the bees. And so I'm, I've slid the comb out onto the, onto the back of the door to the, to the bee box. You have a little time to just sit and enjoy where you are. Look around, enjoy the monarch butterfly that's going by, hear the crickets singing behind us. Off in the distance, there's a marsh over there. And you can hear the, hear the geese honking. Here she comes. Yes, that's one of our bees. She knows what she's looking for, but she's a little nervous. 
Not too nervous though. Ah, brilliant bee. That's what that's a sight I as a bee hunter love to see. It's when the bee lands and puts her tongue in the sugar syrup because that means she's really hooked on what what I'm offering. Okay, now we start the process of labeling bees. Okay, nice. Two bees simultaneously. This is going to be first bee will be orange thorax. Well, I not quite got her. I'm going to wet my brush again with this orange paint. I'm trying to make this into orange thorax. Yes, she is. I need to... But I want it to be really clear so I can see it at a glance. I'm going to add a little more paint to this bee that's orange thorax. There we go. Now I can recognize her instantly. Oh, and here's yellow thorax is back. Okay, now I'm going to make a little table in my notebook here about with a column for individual bees and then the time they leave, the time they return, and also the direction they fly off. Okay, so our first Okay, here comes another bee in, and this bee is orange abdomen. Okay. That bee with the orange on the abdomen, it's a pretty, it's not as clear a paint job as I'd like. So if I can get her in, if she settles in the right position, as she is, I'll try to get a little more That's better. Okay. okay. That bee was away only three minutes. Mm. That's, that means this nest is near. Well, well. Good. Well, let's get a direction on you. And action is building up here. Orange thorax. organize things to make a move. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these combs in the box and I'm going to hide the other one so that everybody will have to go into that box, comb in the box. They'll be, they won't like that because it's different. But the temptation is large to bees in the box so I can trap them in the box and then take them to our new location, which will be up towards that tree. And I've gotten a couple of readings here, which suggest it's not a long way away, but if we can get a little closer, it would be good before we start searching for the tree. Okay, I got one bee that's settled in on the comb, two, 
I want a bunch. <laughs> I want lots. Now what I can do is I can do this. I'll close them in. I'll lure them into the back. And then I'll open the box. So I get three trapped and then I can One. Two. Three. I also like to get some of my painted bees so I don't lose them. Okay, this is looking good. <laughs> Let's let a, a number to get a good number to settle. We've got orange thorax and red thorax, five unmarked bees. Come on, orange thorax, go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Some bees are very calm and settle easily, and others are a bit nervous. Okay. Now we're going to move. Okay, so the bees have told us with pretty good precision the direction to their home. And we know it's not too far away. And here's what I mean when I say they've showed us with pretty good precision. You can see they're pretty consistent 285 degrees, 277. 295, 295, 290, 295, 280, 293, 285, 310. So it's clearly, it's up, it's a little to the northwest of us, up in the direction of these pines, up, up by the house, to their home. Okay, I'll move. process of making this move. I've moved up moved up the hill in the direction the bees were flying about about a hundred meters. Sometimes I'll go at 300 meters but this time I, I sense that the bees home is nearby and I don't want to overshoot it so I'm gonna gonna make a relatively small jump or move. 
I want to get my back to the sun, so I'm going to position myself on this side of the table. Now this is a good sign. There are bees just poking around here. They can smell the scent, probably, coming from our little scent reservoir. Now that's a very good sign. That means we'll, we won't lose our line as we make this move. So now I'll remove the rubber band. Open up the box so it, it actually, I'm going to keep the box facing in the same direction. It's always been facing south because I'm going to let the bees out. Opening the box up, bees are coming out. <laughs> and they're circling around. I'd have to be very lucky to follow one. This is a new location. They will do a lot of circling to get their bearings before flying off. Oh, this is very nice. I've opened up the box. I'm putting out the combs and already there's a good bunch of bees here. In fact, I don't even need the box now. I'm going to put it aside. Okay, bees. much circling. I'm going to sit back a little bit. That one went that way. Oh yeah, now I just saw one fly <laughs> straight to that dead tree. <laughs> That's great. Well, as you can see, we found, we found the bee tree. We're successful bee hunters. We're mighty bee hunters <laughs> today. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, this little introduction to the wonderful open-air sport of bee hunting. I think you can see it challenges the muscles and the brain, so it's wonderful in that regard. It's, uh, and it's also kind of uh, gives you a sense of triumph when you finally find the tree. Um, if you're interested in this taking up this sport and you'd like to learn more of the details and hear more stories about it, I've actually written a little book called Following the Wild Bees. The Craft and Science of Bee Hunting, and I can recommend it. It's a good read. <laughs> and I wrote it simply because it's so much fun to do this bee hunting, and I wanted to share, share, the, share it all with you, the readers. Thank you. <laughs>